With in-person events finally becoming a thing, the year of 2022 in professional wrestling has been an interesting one. With full capacity crowds finally making their return, a lot of wrestling companies are pulling triggers on storylines that might have been paused due to the Panorama Pizza. This combined with Tony Khan's purchase of Ring of Honor, Roman Reigns basically becoming Thanos, on top of that the Forbidden Door being kicked in all the way open, the recent injury bug going around all US promotions shouldn't damper the fact that we have had a beautiful, chaotic, and magnificent year so far in professional wrestling. And with us being halfway through the year, man, we have got some really special matches. This is Extreme League Wrestling, and here are our top 10 matches of 2022 so far. But chances are, if you're watching this video, you're probably not subscribed, so go ahead and click that subscribe button, hit the bell, and give us a like. We have a good bit of content being drummed up for you guys, and thank you so much for the support. First up, let's talk about our honorable mentions. This year has been great for professional wrestling, with banger after banger after banger being provided by all major wrestling promotions. Frankly, it's been so good, you can make a top 10 list just with our honorable mentions. But in no particular order, our honorable mentions go out to Sammy Guevara vs. Cody Rhodes Beach Break TNT title ladder match, NJPW's Capital Collision 4-Way US title match, the TNT title triple threat on Rampage before AEW's Revolution event, Kenta vs. Tanahashi at Wrestle Kingdom 16, Osprey vs. Okada at Wrestle Kingdom 16, FTR vs. The Young Bucks on Dynamite, the Jericho Appreciation Society vs. The Blackpool Combat Club, and of course, every single hook match. Anyway, let's get to the list. Number 10, John Moxley vs. Wheeler Yuta. After the Blackpool Combat Club formed this year, it was pretty much assumed that a new member would be coming very soon. With Brian Danielson name dropping people like Lee Moriarty and Lee Johnson, we were all excited to see who the next member of the BCC would be. If you would have told anyone at the time that it was going to be the other guy in Best Friends that isn't the main best friend, you might be met with a very polite meh. But this match shortly turned that meh into an oh yeah. Being that the Blackpool Combat Club's only goal is to really check notes, kick people's heads in, it makes sense that you have to fight in order to become a part of the group. We honestly wouldn't blame you if you weren't a Wheeler Yuta fan prior to watching this match. But man, his technical skill, his character work, his physicality, and his crimson mask will turn you into one very quickly. Number 9, Hangman Adam Page vs Lance Archer for the AEW World Title in a Texas Death Match. After the conclusion of his amazing rivalry with Kenny Omega, it was going to be always interesting to see where Hangman would go from here. And while a first defense against Lance Archer could be uninspiring to some, especially with the intervention of American Top Team, this match really makes all those concerns go right out the window. From the two men literally destroying the top rope and using it as a weapon, and Hangman Page not only having to fight off Lance Archer, but Dan Lambert and Jake the Snake, this match is dirty, it's grimy, it's extreme, and man, it is beautiful. Lance Archer is a beautiful man. Tony, please use him better. This match played a great role in showing how Hangman can not only be AEW World Champion, but a badass babyface locker room leader. Number 8, Thunder Rosa vs. Britt Baker for the AEW Women's Title in a Steel Cage, AEW, St. Patrick's Day Slam. One year after their legendary Lights Out match at last year's AEW St. Patrick's Day Slam, it was only natural for this all to culminate in Thunder Rosa being crowned AEW Women's Champion. This combined with St. Patrick's Day Slam being held in San Antonio, Texas, Thunder Rosa's hometown, and a beautiful entrance, the night was perfect for La Meta Meta to finally dethrone the Doctor. Ignoring the fact that these two faced off two weeks earlier at AEW Revolution, this match is beautiful, bloody, but beautiful. The tax spot and the air rate crash from the top rope onto the stack of chairs really does give you a full sugar honey iced tea moment. The drama, the violence, combined with a Dustin Rhodes post-match celebration, this match is a beautiful celebration for the best woman in professional wrestling, and you can quote me on that. Number 7, Joshua Alexander vs. Moose for the Impact title at Rebellion. All in all, the AEW and Impact partnership turned out pretty well for Impact Wrestling. The company was able to add names like Kenny Omega and Christian Cage to its world title history, but this is not the TNA of old, brother. At Bound for Glory, Joshua Alexander was able to defeat Christian Cage to become Impact Champion. Wow, amazing feel-good moment. Joshua Alexander's wife and children are even celebrating with him in the ring until, uh-oh, here's a Moose with a tiny trophy. Moose then cashes in his very tiny trophy to beat Alexander and now become the new Impact World Heavyweight Champion. Wow, what a dick. We then got to see an amazing nearly year-long story of Moose becoming one of the gods of professional wrestling and Joshua Alexander having to fight his way back to the top. 
With the image of him being pinned in front of his wife and children, Alexander's contract actually expired during the storyline, leading to even more interest and intrigue. But then Alexander returned and man this match is good. Before we get too into the match, look at his son in his tiny singlet. God my heart's gonna explode. It is a counter fest with Alexander being able to counter Moose's spear, Moose being able to reverse every single one of Alexander's attempts at his pile driver. Once Alexander finally hits it and gets the three count, man it's one of those beautiful baby face pops you don't get too often nowadays in wrestling. 10 out of 10. Number 6, Becky Lynch vs Bianca Belair, WrestleMania 38, Night 1. If you rewind the clock to Becky Lynch's return to last year's SummerSlam, saying that the reception was mixed would be putting it very lightly. But eventually, with a little bit of time, the big time Bex persona ended up going over fairly well, and we all knew eventually it would be Bianca's time once again. Now with plenty of time to prepare, the story of Becky Lynch trying to put the match away early as Bianca tries to slow it down to match her pace goes over extremely well with the WrestleMania crowd. One final KOD signed, sealed, and delivered the EST's newest title reign. Heck, we're even tempted to say that this is better than her showing with Sasha at last year's WrestleMania, but we can find about that in the comments. Number 5, Cody Rhodes vs Seth Rollins at Hell in a Cell. I would say out of any wrestler on this list, Cody Rhodes has had the most interesting 2022. From being booed out of the building for AEW at his refusal to turn heel to debuting at WrestleMania, the American Nightmare has definitely been on a roller coaster. I, like many of us, thought this torn pectoral muscle issue was most likely a work to give more gravitas to the Hell in the Cell match between he and Seth Rollins. Boy, I was wrong. I was, I was really, really wrong. Watching Cody take off his Homelander jacket to reveal the bruise and the audible shock of the Chicago crowd really does make this a clutching at your pearls moment. On top of the injury, this is the perfect mix of Southern wrestling in a Cody Rhodes style match, with all the pomp and circumstance of WWE. Seth Rollins using a kendo stick on the torn peck of Cody Rhodes, bringing out a weight belt with polka dots with visionary laced upon it. Seth Rollins is a proper heel in this entire match, and God, it is beautiful. While the American Nightmare will be missed, when he returns at the Royal Rumble, get ready for a warrior style pop. Number 4, Eddie Kingston vs. Tomohiro Ishii, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Capital Collision. Eddie Kingston is a beautiful, violent man. Tomohiro Ishii is also a beautiful, violent man. Put them together, and they make this masterpiece. While this match is lacking in the story department, New Japan Pro Wrestling sets the perfect stage for these two boys to go at it. As a professional wrestling fan, sometimes you don't need overly complex stories or characters. Sometimes you just need two men that say, hey, you want to fight? Eddie Kingston's visual storytelling mixed with Ishii's strong style make for an amazing matchup. If you want to pop for chops, this match has you covered. Eddie Kingston allows his emotions to get the better of him, leading to an Ishii win, and I just think this is a perfect little appetizer for Forbidden Door. Number 3, John Moxley vs. Brian Danielson, AEW Revolution. To us, it's easy to make the argument that John Moxley's return post-alcohol rehabilitation has been perfect. From his return promo to this match, it's great to not only see the former lunatic fringe get better both mentally and physically, but to come back to AEW television with one of the best factions of recent memory, god that's inspiring. The match itself is a violent and technical masterpiece, with Moxley just barely eking out the win. Prior to the match, Moxley stated that he didn't ride with anyone he didn't bleed with, and finally being busted open with Brian Danielson and the addition of William Regal, we are more than excited to see the future of the Black Bull Combat Club. Number 2, FTR vs The Briscoes, ROH Supercard of Honor One of the biggest stories of this year has been Tony Khan's purchase of Ring of Honor, a promotion that has without a doubt set the groundwork for the current wrestling industry we have today. While the future of Ring of Honor is still uncertain under the regime of All Elite Wrestling, man they have not disappointed so far. As them boys and FTR began to spar online, it was just a matter of time before these two would collide. And finally, after months of waiting, man, it was sure worth it. It is no secret that FTR has had a career renaissance this year, holding both the ROH and AAA tag team titles, and there's also a certain AEW tag titles that we reckon they should probably win soon. And please don't let the praising of FTR shadow the Briscoes. This match shows why they are one of the best older statesmen in the tag team division in all of professional wrestling. A match well deserving of the Dave Meltzer 5 stars, please go back and watch it after this video, it is so freaking good and we cannot wait for these two to clash again. And finally, our number one is CM Punk vs MJF at AEW Revolution Dog Collar Match. 
The CM Punk NJF feud has arguably been one of the best feuds post-pandemic, marrying something to the rivalry between Mr. Incredible and Syndrome from Pixar's The Incredibles. These two really showed us what happens whenever super fans become super villains. From MJF's impassioned promo about being bullied, to Punk's full realization on what leaving the wrestling world might have done to other people, this match was built to a great blow-off at AEW Revolution. While admittedly a little long, this dog collar match had every bit of emotion that you could have expected from a super fan versus superhero story arc. With CM Punk's reprisal of his ROH entrance to Wardlow's face turn at the end of the match, this is a beautiful execution of fine storytelling. And with the dog collar match slowly becoming the best blow-off stipulation in all elite wrestling, we personally think this is just the beginning of a very long rivalry. So that's our list. What have been your favorite matches this year? Go ahead and let us know in the comments down below. Go ahead, like, subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and follow us on all social media. This has been Extreme League Wrestling, and thank you for watching.